Meanwhile, the Ravens had two major losses Sunday. One, the game to the Broncos in Mile High, and two, Terrell Suggs. Suggs is done for the year with an Achilles injury. The team has picked up Jason Babin, who was released by the Jets at final cuts to step in for him. Suggs tweeting this. Chin up, Ravens Nation. We've been here before. This changes nothing. Our mission is still the same. Hashtag 2016 San Francisco. Obviously, the Super Bowl up there in the Bay. Hashtag Ravens Nation. Stephen A. Smith, how does this impact the whole AFC North landscape with the Ravens not having Suggs now? Me, I think it gives the uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers a, 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 a leg up. I mean, obviously we can't ignore the Cincinnati Bengals because they've been to the playoffs the last four years. But I'm just so down on them as a postseason team. I, I guess I don't pick them because I'm actually rooting that they don't waste our time about by going to the playoffs so we don't have to watch them lose again and, and for Marvin Lewis to go 12 years without having won a playoff game, a single playoff game as a head coach. So rather than subject ourselves to that level of ineptitude, I I would just sit there and focus on Pittsburgh and Baltimore. What I would say to you is this. Pittsburgh offense is high-powered. Once Le'Veon Bell comes back and Martavius Bryant comes back, it'll be even better. Hopefully, Pouncey will be coming back as well. The defensive side of the ball makes them highly questionable, but I've got to believe that at some point in time, they won't look as ridiculously awful as they did to open the season. Having said all of that, I look at Baltimore, and my question is, even though I think that losing Terrell Suggs is a devastating loss, their defense is still going to be big time with Jimmy Smith, with Wes, with, with C.J. Mosley and those boys. Um, I, I believe in that defense, but I do think, Skip, they've lost a little something because you don't just replace a Terrell Suggs who combined with Mosley for 29 sacks last year. That's a hard, hard thing to replace. And I think that how you offset that is by producing more offensively. And then that leaves me questioning. That means I have to rely on Flacco even more. Even though he had an outstanding year last year, I don't think that that's going to be the case this year. Steve Smith is entering his final season. We believe in Steve Smith. We both love him. We think he's a stud. But Torrey Smith is gone. And when I look at what they have in Perriman, we just don't know what he's going to be able to deliver. So all of those things being considered, even though I like Forsett a lot and what he's capable of doing, everybody knows him now. He's not going to surprise anybody. I just think the loss of Suggs from a motivational perspective, as well as from a production perspective. You don't just lose him and things remain the same. Even if it's just a little bit, you've lost something. And them with the Steelers was nip and tuck. And when you combine that with the fact that the offense would need to make up for the loss of subs, I don't see this offense being able to do it. I'm not saying they're not gonna make the playoffs. I'm not saying they're gonna fall apart, but I, I, I no longer perceive them as my division winners in the AFC North because I think losing Suggs is going to cost you something. I refuse to believe a player of that magnitude being gone means nothing. Mm. I, I hear what you're saying, and yet I still like the Ravens to win this division. I still have Pittsburgh winning a wild card. But listen, I like the heck out of... Terrell Suggs, Terrell Suggs, I should say. Yep. I've had many battles with him on this show, but I respect the heck out of him on the football field. <sighs> Unfortunately, his other Achilles just snapped. He's had two of them now on both sides. That's just freakish, flukish, bad luck. I don't, I don't know what it is. I can't explain. That's, that's the most inexplicable injury of all the injuries is why your Achilles, when you're basically doing nothing, just snaps. I guess it's just meant to be. So I feel for him. But he's going on 33 years of age, and even though I completely agree with you on the leadership side, the experience side, the present side of having Suggs in your locker room and on your sideline and in your defensive huddle and sometimes in the backfield on third and long, I get all that. But in this game last Sunday at Denver, big opening game for them, place where they've been very successful. Man, it, I, I look at his stats, there, there aren't any. Mr. Suggs registered zero and zero. He didn't have a tackle or a sack until he was gone with, with 821 left in that game. And they did have four sacks as a team, and you mentioned C.J. Mosley had a couple, Canty had one, McClellan had one. Ozzie Smith is a flat-out wizard of a GM. 
I, I don't know that there's anybody better in football at picking players, that knowing talent, than Ozzy. He just keeps reloading and reloading and reloading. And half the time I look at the names that Flacco's throwing to, Crockett Gilmore, I know he was there last year, but, but, but I don't even know who these people are, and they're all pretty good. And, and you by, watch some football. I do, but, but they're throwing. Flacco throws into the end zone on Sunday against Peyton Manning in Denver. He throws into the end zone at the end of the game to win the game and hits Crockett Gilmore right there. And it took two Broncos coming across making sensational plays. Some of the, the best double play that I've seen in a long time where, where you just took the ball out of his hands and intercepted it and saved the game. You're going to win it or lose it and they barely lost it. But Flacco did, and I'm, I'm no Flacco fan, as you know, he's Joe Flucco half the time to me, but that wasn't Flucco, that was just flat out Flacco. Nice throw, Joe, could have won the game, maybe should have won the game, Denver was just a little bit better. So my point is, I don't, th Suggs' tweet is right, what Molly read, I, the mission is still the same. I don't think they're going away. Well, the mission is still the same, but let's analyze why. Because of the genius that Ozzie Newsom is when it comes to finding talent. I mean, this kid Jernigan, Brandon Williams and these boys, you lose Haloti Nada and it doesn't seem like you've lost anything. We get all of that. We know Ozzie Newsom is the best. We understand that. There's no denying that. And you know I'm a huge fan of John Harbaugh. I love John Harbaugh. Yep. So when you have an organization like that, the structure is going to remain intact. The foundation is going to remain intact. They're not going to fall off the wagon. But again, we're talking about the magnitude of subs. And we're talking about an offense and whether or not they can give it to you. There's a reason why there have been many occasions where the Baltimore Ravens did not end up being what we thought they would be. Because even though the talent is there, Something is missing at some key pivotal moment, and as a result, it ends up negating their ability to propel themselves. Okay. And I think this is one of those instances where it'll happen. They'll make the playoffs because they're too stout not to. But I just think that they lose a little something with Suggs, and that may be all that the Steelers need to leapfrog over them. Okay, last quick point about those Steelers. I remind you that last Thursday night, opening night, at Foxborough, Tom Brady was protected by three rookies in his offensive line. I agree. And this kid running the ball behind Tom Brady, the kid that Rex can't remember his name, that kid had been out of football for two years, and they got away with him running and catching the football and torched the Pittsburgh defense. I'm just not sure it's good enough to stand up to win this division. Well, I agree with you. The Steelers' defense is definitely suspect. Shazair and Jarvis Jones definitely need to step up. Timmons needs to get in their head and get them to produce something. Yep. And my God, can I please get some kind of pass rush? Pretty please with Sugar on top. Can somebody on the Pittsburgh Steelers record some sacks? I mean, good Lord. So, Stephen, you have the Steelers winning the division. Skip, you have the Ravens and the Steelers getting in with a wild card? Yep. All right, here's the uh, AFC North matchups this weekend. 49ers at Steelers, that's a good one. Chargers, Bengals, Titans, Browns, Ravens at Raiders. Beast Mom, I didn't write this. You're all wrong for that. <laughs> Marsha, that was funny, though. Marshawn's mom takes to Facebook and blasts the Seahawks play calling. Mark Schlereth is in the house. He joins the desk to offer his thoughts as well. Don't miss it after the break.